Hello and welcome to National 5 Biology Unit 2, Caria 2, Control and Communication. This video is on the first half of Control and Communication, so part A, is we're just going to look at the nervous system here and then cover hormones in a separate video. So we're still on Unit 2, Multicellular Organisms, and this is Topic 2. Once again, here is the SQA course specification or mandatory knowledge section for this topic. So remember, this is all the bits of information and content that you could be tested on in an exam or a test at this level for this topic. Remember, this video only covers part A. For part B on hormones, you need to go and watch a separate video. Feel free to pause the video at any point to go back and rewatch sections if you need to. And as we go through the theory, there'll be some questions after each part so you can check that you're ready to move on. So our learning intention today is to learn about control and communication and in particular the nervous system. Hopefully by the end of this lesson you should be able to state the two parts that make up the nervous system, state and describe the functions of the different parts of the brain, name and describe the three types of neuron, explain how impulses travel along neurons and describe the structure and function of a reflex arc. So first we're going to look at the different parts of the nervous system. There are two main parts, the central nervous system, or CNS as it's often shortened to, and the other nerves. You also need to know in more detail what the CNS is made up of. So it's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. Now you can see all of this summarised in the diagram on the right hand side. The way I remember the parts of the nervous system is that central means in the middle and the brain and spinal cord are in the middle of the diagram. So they are part of the CNS, whereas the other nerves which radiate out from the central nervous system are the other nerves. So they are the other parts of the central nervous system. So central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, other nerves are the second part. So let's try some quick questions on what we've covered so far to check your knowledge before we move on. So pause the video here and try these questions either by saying them out loud or by writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so the first question was name the two main parts of the nervous system. They are the central nervous system and the other nerves. Our second question was name the two parts that make up the CNS. They are the brain and the spinal cord. The next thing you need to understand about this topic is the brain. You need to be able to label the parts of the brain and also describe each part's function. So here we have a basic diagram of the brain and it's split into three parts as you can see here that are highlighted. I've also shown where the spinal cord is but that is not one of the parts of the brain. So there is the cerebrum, the cerebellum and the medulla. One way to remember that the cerebrum is this part here, so the large part that's on the top, is some people think of cerebrum as being cerebrum, so something like a drum. Um, so the top of the brain being like a drum is the cerebrum. Cerebellum means little brain, and this is the part here at the back, which looks like a mini brain in the picture. Finally, we have the medulla, which is this part at the front that is then coming down and then joining to the spinal cord. So cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla. The next thing you have to do is be able to explain the functions of each part. So the cerebrum, which is the large part here in grey, controls memory, personality and conscious thought. So when you think to yourself, this is the part of the brain you're using. They know this is the part of the brain which has this function as they learned that injuries to this part of the brain could cause memory loss or changes in personality. So the cerebrum controls memory, personality and conscious thought. The cerebellum, so the little brain here, it controls a balance and coordination. So one way to remember this is that the two L's in cerebellum look like legs. So think of it being like a little dancer with two legs. So balance and coordination is really important. So this is also the part of the brain which is larger in cats, which is why their balance and coordination is so good. Finally, you need to know the function of the medulla. The way I remember this is the medulla comes down the way, and if you think about where you would measure your pulse, it would be on your neck. So the medulla controls heart rate and breathing rate. So here's a summary of the functions of the three main parts of the brain. All of them start with the word controls, and you need to ensure you not only match these up, but you also write, can write them from memory. So cerebrum controls memory, personality and conscious thought. Cerebellum controls balance and coordination. And medulla controls heart rate and breathing rate. So let's try some quick questions um, on what we've covered so far to check your knowledge before we move on. So again, pause the video here, try the questions by saying them out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. 
So the first question was to name the three parts of the brain, the cerebrum, the cerebellum and the medulla. For each part, describe its function. So the cerebrum controls memory, personality and conscious thought. Cerebellum controls balance and coordination and medulla controls heart rate and breathing rate. So for the nervous system to work properly, it needs to have input from the external environment. So how does it receive this input of information? Well, your sense organs, which you should remember as being your skin, eyes, nose, ears and mouth, all contain receptor cells. These receptors detect sensory input from the environment that we call stimuli or sensory stimuli. So this is what I'm going to refer to them as as the rest of the lesson, so sensory stimuli. So the receptors detect sensory stimuli, which passes through the nervous system, and we'll come back to the details of how that happens soon. The end result of this is the effectors will carry out a response. So this, if the effectors in the body are either muscles or glands, muscles can move or can contract um, to cause an effect, um, whereas glands release hormones, and we'll do a whole topic on glands and hormones next. So to summarise, at the start, receptors are in the sense organs and they detect sensory stimuli. And at the end, effectors, so muscles or glands, will carry out a response. So neurons pass information through the nervous system and connect these receptors with the effectors. There are three types of neurons, sensory, inter and motor neurons. And you need to remember that order is it's really important. So before we move on to more detail about the types of neurons, let's try some quick questions on what we've covered so far to check your knowledge. So again, pause the video here, try the questions by saying them out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So the first question was sense organs have receptors. What is the function of these receptors? Well, it's to detect sensory stimuli or input. What is the function of the effectors? Well, they are muscles or glands that carry out the response. Finally, naming the three types of neurons, sensory, inter and motor, and even better if you can get them in that order. So the next thing you need to know is the function of each type of neuron. Essentially, each one starts with the same phrase, so passes information, okay? Um, so you need to know it passes information from and then where it's going to. So the next slide will help me explain where everything is. So we spoke earlier about receptor cells and receptor cells detecting stimuli and effectors at the end of the pathway, so muscles or glands, causing a response. And you can see both of these here. This one looks a bit like a muscle, um, so that would be the effector in this case. So we have our receptor cells and we have our effectors. Um, this diagram also shows the neurons which connect them. So the order of neurons which transmits that information from the receptor cells in the sense organ all the way to the effectors. Here you can see the sensory neuron is the first one and it passes information from the receptor cells in the sense organs to the CNS, which is represented by the orange line here. Then within the CNS, you can see the interneuron. So interneurons are found within the CNS, so within the brain and spinal cord. And you can see the interneurons pass the information from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. Finally, the motor neuron passes information from the CNS to the effectors. So try and keep this diagram in your head and it'll help you remember the function of each neuron because we just have to say passes information from and then where it's going from and where it's going to. So if I change the slide back, we can look at the neuron functions again and you can see each one starts with passes information from and then you just need to fill in where from and to. So sensory neurons pass information from the receptors to the CNS. The interneurons are found within the CNS and pass information from the sensory to the motor neurons. And finally, the motor neurons pass information from the CNS to the effectors, which remember are muscles or glands which can cause the response. So if you're asked to put neurons in order, which is a common question, they always go sin sensory, then inter, then motor. A short way to remember this is sim. So before we move on, let's try another few quick questions to see if we're ready. So pause the video here and try the questions either by saying them out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So what is the function of the sensory neuron? Well, we know we have to start with passes information from the receptors to the CNS. What's the function of the motor neuron? Again, passes information 
from the CNS to the effectors, which will obviously enable a response to occur. What is the function of the interneuron? Again, passes information from the sensory to the interneurons, and you can also add that they are found within the CNS. We only find interneurons in the CNS. And finally, listing the neurons in order, sensory, inter, then motor. So now we know about where the neurons pass information from and to, we need to know how that information travels along and between the neurons. If we look at our diagram of a nervous system pathway again, information has to travel not only along the neurons, but also between the neurons. There are small gaps between the sensory and interneuron and between the inter and motor neuron. Um, and the information has to be able to pass across these gaps. So how do these impulses travel? Well, electrical impulses carry messages along the neurons themselves. So whether it's sensory, inter or motor neurons, electrical impulses are how the messages are carried. One wee thing to note here is to never say electricity, always say electrical impulses. Now, it wouldn't be safe or efficient for the electrical impulses to travel across small gaps that are found between the neurons. So instead, small chemicals transfer these messages between neurons and these small gaps are called synapses. So you can see all of that information summarised on this diagram here. An electrical impulse carrying information travels down the first neuron and when it gets to the small gap that's found between the neurons, um, which is also called a synapse, it cannot go any further. So because of that, the small gap um, or synapse becomes filled with chemicals which travel across the synapse to the next neuron where it will send another electrical impulse. So again, before we move on, let's try some more quick questions so we know that what we've covered so far we've understood. Pause the video here, try the questions, and then we'll go through the answers. So the first question was to name the gaps found between neurons. They are synapses. How do messages get transferred between neurons? Chemicals. So chemicals transfer the messages across the synapse. What type of impulses carry messages along neurons? Well, that would be electrical impulses. Okay, so the last thing you have to know about the nervous system is about reflex arcs. Now, most of the time you're under control of what you do and you think about things even if it's only for a few seconds before you do them. However, if our bodies are in some kind of danger, they need a way to react really quickly in order to protect the body from harm, which doesn't involve the brain taking time to process that information and causing the response because that would take too long. And in that process, you would still be being harmed. So this way of bypassing the brain and causing a response that's really quick is called a reflex arc. You need to know both the function and the structure of a reflex arc. The function of a reflex arc is that it protects the body from harm. This is a really, really common question and you should know the answer off by heart. So the function of a reflex arc is it protects the body from harm. The structure of a reflex arc is similar to what we've already discussed. So let's imagine in the diagram here, you have just touched something really, really hot. The receptors in your skin on your hand take that harmful stimuli and pass that information down a sensory neuron to the CNS, which is this bit here. This is basically a spinal cord that has just been cut in half. This is what this diagram shows. So the sensory neuron attaches to the interneuron, which is within the CNS. But the information is not passed to the brain because that would take too long. So basically, don't mention the brain in any answer about a reflex arc. This information is then passed out of the CNS from the interneuron to the motor neuron, which carries the information to the effector, which in this case here would be a muscle. The muscle would then contract, causing your hand to move away from the harmful stimuli, and it would therefore protect your body from harm, which is what a reflex arc does. Now, usually this is asked in the form of a series of steps or as an extended response question. So the stages of a reflex arc are as follows, and this is how you would describe them if you were asked. So a harmful stimuli is detected by receptor cells within the sense organs. It's important to note that it's a harmful stimuli um, because otherwise it would just be a normal um, kind of nervous system transfer. So it's only a reflex arc because it's trying to protect the body from harm. So it means it has to be harmful stimuli that's detected. This information is passed along the sensory neuron to the CNS in the spinal cord. Information passes from the sensory to an interneuron within the spinal cord, and information passes from that interneuron to a motor neuron. 
The inflammation finally travels along a motor neuron to an effector, which is a muscular gland, which causes a response in order to protect the body from harm. So you can see that we've started with a harmful stimuli and we've finished with protecting the body from harm because this is a reflex arc. So finally, let's try some final quick questions about reflex arc. Pause the video here again and try the questions and then play the video when you're ready to go through the answers. The second question is a five marker, so it is quite long. Okay, so what is the function of a reflex arc? It protects the body from harm. Describing the stages of a reflex arc. So the first stage is the harmful stimuli is detected by the receptor cells within the sense organs. Then the information is passed along the sensory neuron to the CNS. The information passes from the sensory to the interneuron within that spinal cord. Then the information passes from the interneuron to the motor neuron. And then finally, the information travels along the motor neuron to the effector, which can be a muscle or a gland, depending on what type of reflex it is. And this causes a response which will protect the body from harm. So that's us finished learning about um, the part the nervous system plays in controlling communication. I hope that you can now be able to state the two parts that make up the nervous system, state and describe the functions of the different parts of the brain, name and describe the three types of neurons, explain how impulses travel along neurons and describe the structure and function of a reflex arc. Please feel free to go back and watch parts of the video again in future if you need a refresher on the topic. Now, please move on to part B of this topic, which is hormonal control as a separate video, so that you've fully covered control and communication before moving on to another key area. Thank you once again for listening.